Hey, welcome back to the lecture. So in this lecture, let's understand start and stop conditions which are generated by the master. Remember that all transactions in I2C begin with a start and are terminated by a stop. Start condition is designated by the letter S and stop condition is designated by the letter P. So now what is start condition? So a high to low transition on the SDA line while SCL is high defines a start condition. So here, if you observe this uh, waveform, when the SCL is high, there's a transition of the SDA line, right, from high to low. And that is actually defined as a start condition. So master does this first in order to generate the start condition. And what exactly is stop condition? So whenever master wants to generate the stop condition, what it does is it actually makes a transition on the SDA that is low to high when the clock is high. And that is called as stop condition. After the stop condition, you can see that both SDA and SCL are released. Released means they actually went to the pull up state, right? That is high state. Right, both lines are pulled to high. So that means the master has released the bus. So you have to remember this because uh, this is one of the important uh, interview question asked several times. So what exactly is the start condition and what exactly is the stop condition in I2C? So very, very simple. And uh, you have to remember these two lines. All right, so here I have one trace of I2C. All right, so in the later part of the course, I will also teach you how to get this trace. Now, this I have just taken to demonstrate the start and stop condition. For example, in this uh, waveform, you can see that this line that is channel zero is serial clock, and this is the SDA data line. And here in this software, the software detects the start condition by this green dot here. Here you can see that when the clock is high, so there's a transition of the SDA from high to low, and that is the start condition. This is a start condition. And after the start condition, the clock's actually produced. Here you can see that the clock is produced after around eight microseconds after the start condition, the clock is produced. So this is the first clock cycle. All right, so now let's detect the address phase here. Address phase is of one byte, right? In which seven bits are slave address and one bit is read write bit, right? So let's detect that. Let's count here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? And this is eight. So basically the address phase ends here. It starts here and ends here. And up to here, is a slave address. So this data is actually the slave address. And uh, after that, this is the read write bit. And here you can see that the read write bit is zero, right? So the read write bit is actually transmitted at the eight clock cycle, right? So which is zero. So zero means master is going to transmit. And at the ninth clock cycle, the ACK is received from the slave. So here it is, ACK. This is an ACK. So ACK means the data line will be pulled low by the slave. So that is actually ACK. So we'll understand what is ACK and NAC in the next lecture. But remember that at the ninth clock cycle, master is going to receive the ACK. And ACK means the data line is pulled to low by the slave. And that is exactly which is happening here. You can see that data line is low. So that's why the software is saying the ACK is received. So here you can see that it is saying ACK is received. All right, so this completes the address phase. And after that, master is going to write this data, right? So master is going to write the data for the next eight clock cycles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight right? One byte of data is transmitted and that is actually the letter S. 
whatever it is 53 that's okay and at the ninth clock cycle the slave is going to send the ack this is the ack and after that master is going to generate another start condition here because master wants to change the mode of communication i mean it may wants to read now from the slave so that's why master is actually triggered or initiated another start here and this is called as a repeated start repeated start means without issuing a stop condition generating one more start condition is called as repeated start so here you can see that when the clock is high there is a transition right from the high to low so this is called as a repeated start and after repeated start again this is the address phase and here you can see that in this case master is going to receive the data here you can see that the read write bit is one so first second third fourth fifth sixth seventh so eighth one is a read write right so that's why this is actually you can see that the read write bit is one that means master is going to receive the data and this is a hack all right now master is going to receive the data means this is a data which is received from the slave up to here all right and this is a hack this is a position of the hack which is actually sent by the master like that so master receives all this data and at the end what master does is when all the data are received master is going to generate the stop condition and the stop condition is pulling the sda from low to high when the clock is high so this is considered as the stop condition so like that the master and slave communicates and if you are confused don't worry the concept is very simple and as we make a progress we'll understand more so that is actually the stop condition so now some points to remember for you remember that start and stop conditions are always generated by the master the bus is considered to be busy after the start condition the bus is considered to be free again a certain time after the stop condition when the bus is free another master if present can get the chance to claim the bus for data communication the bus stays busy if repeated start is generated instead of stop condition let's understand what is the purpose of repeated start as we make a progress so don't worry about that so remember that most of the mcu's i2c peripherals support both master and slave mode you need not to configure the mode because when the peripheral generates the start condition it automatically becomes the master and when it generates the stop condition it goes back to slave mode so that's why you need not to configure the mode of the device so some devices will always be in slave mode for example a sensor most of the sensors are slave right so that's why the hardware doesn't support the master mode but if you consider the microcontroller, the microcontroller's I2C peripheral supports both master and slave mode. That doesn't mean that you have to configure the mode. Whenever that I2C peripheral generates a start condition, it automatically becomes the master. And when it generates the stop condition, it goes back to the slave mode. And all these things we can understand when we write the driver. All right. In the next lecture, let's understand the address phase in depth.